Hi guys, welcome to the channel. So today we're going to do a quick video. I'm going to start another series soon on the SSG10 again. We're going to do some uh, bits and pieces to it, including getting another barrel and doing a top dead uh, modification on a Action Army hop unit, which is pretty uh, successful in VSR10 platform. So we're going to try it in the SSG10 to see if it's better than the standard hop basically. We can uh, see if we get any more consistent results out of it. So, so far at the moment, this is shooting really, really well. It is performing well. I just wonder if we can squeeze a little bit more out of it. But first, I want to paint it. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay, guys, so we're just going to pull the gun apart. And like any VSR 10 style rifle, it comes apart really easy. You can have the whole thing in bits within within literally three, four minutes. So it, you can pull it apart quite easily. And one thing you want to remember, don't forget the trigger guard because that's got to be painted as well. It's easy to leave that behind and forget to paint it. Um, we're going to take the barrel off, uh, the ice barrel and the hop unit. And um, once we've got that off, we can start to mask up the uh, threads. Now, with the masking of the threads, you don't have to do it really. You know, if you really don't want to, um, it will still screw in. But just remember when you screw the barrel back in, all those little bits of paint that will chip off the thread will then be in with your cylinder which is not ideal you don't really want anything floating around in there it wants to be clinically clean as you can possibly get it so uh, and to do that all I do is use a bit of electrical tape you can use masking tape electrical tape pretty much whatever you want you can even just smear grease on the threads and then wipe it off afterwards but uh, yeah it all works it's all fine so yeah I'm just covering that up now and then after that I just get some rubbing alcohol and clean down any parts that are going to be painted. So I'm just going to do the stock and the outer barrel and those are the only parts I'm going to paint. I also take up the little posts that hold the um, cheek rest into the stock because I don't want paint on those either, just keep them nice and clean and smooth. So they just get taped up and then I, I sort of rud rudimentarily put it back into the stock and then wipe it all down with rubbing alcohol. So cleaning any grease marks, any fingerprints, anything like that off the gun um, because any of the oil out your skin will, can interfere with the, the paint adhering to the stock and I, the stock's got quite a rough finish so it's like a textured finish so I don't rub it down with any uh, sandpaper or anything like that, any glass paper because it's, it's rough enough for the paint to adhere to anyway you don't really need to make it any, any rougher Okay, so now we're going to apply the first coat and we've got a, a light tan colour. Uh, keep it in a well ventilated area, best do it outside because Kryolan does stink. And you want a really light dusting of paint. You don't want great daubs of the stuff on there so it's going to cause runs or any issues like that. It'll take hours to, to actually dry because it's such a thick build up. You want to give it real light. And don't forget this is, this is like a disruptive pattern so you don't want a, a perfect uh, solid finish to it either. So if you do get a couple of areas where the paint's a little bit thinner than others, don't worry about it, it really doesn't matter. Um, but just give it a general coating over so, so you're, you're happy with the colour. Okay, so we're just going to fill in the quick detach sling mounts with some tissue because we don't really want to get paint inside there because they are um, a tight fit anyway. So if you get any paint in there, it's just going to make them unusable. Um, so you want to bung those up, make sure they're all nice and, and tidy and try and trim them down as well because you don't want uh, the bits of tissue sticking out from affecting your actual paint job. So once they're in, do all four of them, you can start applying the, the tan coat to the actual stock itself. And you can see, I almost forgot to do it. I actually gave it a, one jet of spray and I thought, oops, wait a minute, and went back and uh, started again. Now give it 15 minutes to dry and then you can come back and start putting the first layers of colour on. And this is where you need to go careful and go a bit slow. Don't put great chunks of paint on, just little bits at a time. 
and go real easy. Now, obviously I'm using the stencil, you can use leaves or whatever you want. There's so many different things you can use to make a, a camo uh, pattern, even like scrim nets, things like that. But a little bit at a time, I'm starting with the green color at the moment. It's just an olive drab green. And uh, I'll just go over it a little bit at a time, go back, check it. Don't try and do all the colors at once or do great chunks of it. Remember, you're putting other colors on as well. So if you do loads and loads of green and you think, oh, you know, there's still lots of tan showing, it doesn't matter. You've still got to put other colors on. Just a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and just keep layering it up. Don't try and do the whole thing in five minutes. you just got to take your time and take a couple of hours. And you can literally get the whole thing done in a day. You can, uh, you can do little bits at a time, but just give it a good 15 minutes in between each one. Go back, check it. Don't make any rash decisions at the moment. Just let it dry, stand back, look at it, and then move on to the next bit. Patience is everything when doing this. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a right mess. So now the green color has dried, we're going to move on and we're going to start applying the brown color. And you can see I've already done a little bit. So we just put our template down. Again, it doesn't have to be flat or wrapped around or anything like that, just a little bit at a time. I'm doing this from quite a long way away as well because I don't want great chunks of paint on there. We're just doing little bits at a time. Uh, overspray doesn't really matter. We're just trying to get color on there so we can darken it a little bit because at the moment it's obviously very light. So. If you went out with it now it'd probably stand out more than if it was black so you just put a little bit on there just start to cover it up just to cover those light patches up and uh, get the colors on on the actual stock So that's a brown color on there and then i move on to the black and obviously i'm doing the trigger guard now but i move on to the black color after this i then put a little bit more green on because it's still a bit light and a bit uh, bit too much brown i then put a bit more black on and then a tiny bit of brown right at the end and i just keep layering it up and layering it up each time just keep going and keep going now i didn't record the whole process because i'm literally doing the same thing over and over and over again until i'm happy with the results and you will get to a, a the odd occasion when you get there and you think oh it's not going my way but persevere put the next layer on lighten up those dark patches darken those light patches and just until you're happy with the overall coverage and you've got the the color scheme that you want and hopefully when it's all done you should end up with something a bit like this Okay guys, so here is the SSG-10 back together and in one piece. Um, and I'm pretty pleased with the results. I think it's come out really nice. I haven't painted the rubber fore foregrips at the front here and obviously I haven't painted the receiver and the bolt and the scope. And the reason is that I tend to put a rifle wrap on there anyway when I'm, I'm using it. And it's, it's more for looks than anything else or just to back up the rifle wrap to get rid of the sort of the dark sort of block color of black from behind it so it means you don't need to put as much on there but i'm really happy with the results i think it looks really nice 
Now, I know what you guys are going to ask me. It's where did I get that stencil from to do the painting? Well, I can't claim credit for that. I actually got the idea from a guy called uh, Matteo Black off uh, YouTube who made his own stencil out of PVA glue, which is exactly what I've done with this. And you literally get a um, piece of plastic, you cover it in a WD-40 or any light oil really, and you squeeze the PVA glue in strips all over the, over the plastic, let it dry for a couple of days, and then you peel it off to give yourself uh, a bit of a uh, stencil. Now I won't use this again, it's gone a bit stiff since I've applied the paint. Um, it doesn't like the paint being on it, but it's done its job. It's worked on the gun, it was cheap, it was perfect. And all you do, you literally go around, start with a light color, go from light to dark, you go around, put a bit of, well, you paint it in sort of light, uh, dark or light earth color or dark earth or tan, whatever you want it, they'll work. And then you just start to layer over it. And at first it looks awful and you will get to a stage with every gun when you paint it and you'll look at it and go, oh my God, what have I done? It looks horrendous. But you just keep going. You just keep layering and layering and layering. If it goes too dark, you put some light in. If it goes too, too light, if it's still too light, you put some dark on. And you just match it all up. If there's not enough black and lots of brown, you put some black, you put some green. You just keep layering up. And that's what I did with this. And it just takes a couple of hours patience. Now, what I do with the Krylon paint, is before when I'm applying the coats so I don't want to leave it too long uh, because I like to, to keep it flowing so I leave 15 minutes between coats just to let it go sort of dry to the touch but it's not properly dry at that point it's just dry to the touch which means you can sort of manipulate it and spray it just keep layering it up and then I leave it for a good few days either in the sun or at least a warm place for it to just dry off and go hard and uh, away you go perfect and this has been now, uh, what would it be, about a week since I've painted it and it's solid. Now you can put a coat over the top of it to protect it, so you can put a clear coat over it. Um, I've done that with some of my other guns. I probably won't do it with this because I find that when you chip the clear coat, you tend to chip the paint anyway. And it's, it, you will get those knocks and those marks on it anyway, you can't avoid it. Uh, the, the actual Krylon is pretty tough paint anyway. So yeah, it's a pretty quick video today. It's not in-depth really in many ways, it's just an overview of, of what I do and how to paint the gun. I hope you guys get something from this. I always strip the gun down to paint it, I think it's much better. I don't like painting, you'll see some people just mask up the, the cylinder port and um, just go at it and perhaps the glass of the scopes and just go at it with a spray can. I don't personally like that, I like to take all the screws out, keep all the screws clean, all the threads clean and do it properly, take a bit of time because the results are always better. You always get a better result for it. If you do want to paint the, uh, the actual uh, bolt and the receiver and everything, you can do that. There's no problem with that. It just takes a little bit of careful masking to make sure nothing gets inside. And you come out with something like this. And it's less to do with ultimate camouflage, more to do with just customizing gun and making it your own. And uh, I think that's what I've done with this. Just for anyone who wants to know, I have actually kept the markings on the side of the barrel for the hop-up unit. You don't have to do that, it's got a clicker setting, but it's nice to know exactly where you were if you want to go and reset it, so it just gives you an idea. So yeah, that's it. So I know this question comes up a lot whenever I do anything with this rifle, and everyone wants to know where I got this scope from. Uh, just to answer that, you can't, I don't believe you can get these scopes anymore. It's an old uh, Rhino scope, and it's got a, a sunshade on the front. Uh, if you want to do the same look, then you know, there's plenty of scopes out there that will do the same look. Just stick a sunshade on the front and it'll look exactly the same. So don't worry about that, guys. It's perfectly easy to replicate if you want to. Um, this is a decent scope. I really like it. It's a shame you can't get them anymore. But there's plenty of alternatives out there that are just as good. And what I always say with the scope, you can get some very cheap scopes. I always try to get some of the middle of the range scopes from your sniper rifles, just because I find you, they have better... Um, adjustments they keep their sighting a bit better and uh, they're nice to use but obviously if you're using red dots cheap red dots that you sort of get the Chinese copies yeah they're fine I use them myself uh, but for the sniper rifle I always try and get something a little bit better but yeah it's a rhino scope and no you can't get one so next up for this rifle I'm going to be doing some back-to-back -back testing with a Action Army hop-up unit with a top dead center mod I'm going to buy a second barrel from Novridge, uh, outer barrel that is, and uh, we're going to fit that with a 
I haven't decided on the inner barrel yet. We might try a TNT barrel or we might try a edgy barrel. I haven't decided what we're gonna put in there yet. And match it up with the Action Army Hop to see if we can better the accuracy and the range of this rifle. And it's actually pretty good. I'm only doing this as an experiment really rather than a, a proper upgrade because I'm not sure what the results are gonna be compared to what we've actually got on there. So uh, it should be interesting. So I'll be putting a link in the uh, section below in the description so you can actually see where you can get one of these made. I haven't done it as part of my video because it's not my idea, uh, but I'll link uh, Matteo Black's video so you guys can have a look and you can see it being used. Uh, he's, he's slightly different to mine. I actually, I think his is better in many ways. Uh, he's obviously practiced it more than me. This is the first time I've ever done it like this. Usually I use leaves and, and all kinds of bits that you'll find floating around the garden. And it's, I've had some good results as well but uh, I thought this would be a little bit different. And uh, now I'm really happy with the results. So it's a quick video today, guys. Once again, thanks for supporting the channel. It means a lot to us. Uh, we put a lot of time into it and we want to uh, make sure you guys enjoy it. We will be sorting the audio out soon. A couple of you uh, mentioned about the audio and it isn't the greatest, but I have uh, ordered something that's gonna hopefully sort that out. And uh, we should be getting some better sound in the videos. So we've had a lot of comments, a lot of feedback recently on some of the more recent videos. Um, <laughs> not most of them amazingly positive. I really thank you guys for the amazing comments that you put down and, and the, the encouraging um, comments that we get. It really does help and it's amazing to see you guys enjoying our content and supporting the channel because it means a lot to us. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to have some more uh, bits and pieces coming up for you very soon. And uh, remember, subscribe, thumbs up and leave a comment below. See you soon, thanks for watching, bye bye.